The manga anime Nana is suddenly beautiful. I first heard about Nana from some of my online friends. I honestly thought they were just into it because the main character has some cool aesthetic. I would have never guessed what Nana was really about and the emotional roller coaster it puts you through. Before writing this, I was really debating what to make this video on. On one hand, you have the plot of the manga that goes through its twists and turns that always have something interesting going on. Then you have the characters. One of the best cast of characters in any form of media I've ever consumed. It competes with some of my favorite cast of video game characters of all time. They are that well developed, despite the manga not even being finished. I could go really in depth into basically any of them, but Nana's two main characters are as strong as aspect. It's who I really want to talk about the most. Nana Komatsu or Hachi, which is how I would be referring to her in this video, and Nana Osaki are two master classes in character creation. Hachi is a caring girl who seeks to move to Tokyo to leave her love life behind her and start anew. Nana is a glamorous singer who moves to Tokyo in hopes to make it big in the world of rock and roll with her band Blast. They meet each other on the train ride to Tokyo and become close friends despite their different personalities. They each go through a whirlwind of ups and downs while trying to make it in their own world in Tokyo. There are also many other characters though. There's Yasu, a friend and bandmate of Nana who is like a big brother to her. Nobu, Nana's only friend in high school and shares a love for punk music who also has a sweet side to him, and the guitarist for Blast. Shin, the bassist for Blast who has a dark past but is a lovable teenager. Ren, Nana's boyfriend who was in Blast but left the band to go to Tokyo and join a band called Trap Nest before Nana left to Tokyo. Takumi, the leader of Trap Nest. Reira, the singer for Trap Nest. Naoki, the drummer for Trap Nest. Then there is Hachi's friends. Junko, who gives Hachi advice and is like a second mother to Hachi. Then Shoji, Hachi's first serious boyfriend. Nana has many amazing characters, but I sadly can only focus on two. Nana and Hachi, the two main characters. They are both great characters, but also have their own flaws. They are human. Every single one of their actions makes sense in one way or another. I never really question why one of them is doing this or that. I might have hated it, but I could see why. Even if it hurts to watch them do something. Since they are so human-like, it hurts to see them go through hardships. I feel many people that will read or watch this series will misunderstand Nana and Hachi in many different scenarios. If they don't understand the reasons for their actions, maybe even come to downright hate both of them. Especially Hachi, which a lot of people came to dislike. When Hachi chooses Takumi over Nobu, that's when many people will start disliking Hachi. I can't blame them. Takumi is a huge jerk and deserves the hate he gets from fans. But I can't bring myself to hate Hachi for choosing Takumi over Nobu, especially because of the events that led up to her choosing Takumi. Even before Hachi moved to Tokyo, we see a bit of how Hachi is. We see one of Hachi's relationship with an older man that is already married. Hachi doesn't even know his name, but hooks up with him numerous times. She even knew the guy was already married. Hachi honestly didn't care that she was making this guy Chiyon's wife, as long as she was gaining his attention. They weren't in a full relationship, but Hachi was content with that. As Hachi was very attached to him, even after she had agreed to not see him again, she gets drunk one time and remembers her time with him and starts crying. I think Hachi believes she loves him as it was her first relationship in high school, but that is hard to believe as it wasn't a very healthy relationship. Hachi felt guilty after it and followed her for a while, really all the way till she chooses Takumi. But before she moves to Tokyo, she gets into her first serious relationship with Shoji. Shoji eventually comes to Tokyo though. Since Hachi can't move to Tokyo yet, she has to stay in her hometown. At first, Shoji seems really loyal in her long distance relationship. Eventually, when Hachi moves to Tokyo, she intends on trying to make it on her own, but deep down, she intends to just live with Shoji, as I think she believes Shoji will want that as well. Hachi deep down though dreams of just being a housewife and a mother in Tokyo. On the train ride to Tokyo, Hachi meets Nana, a divergence in Hachi's goal to be with Shoji, but I'll get to it later. When Hachi arrives in Tokyo, she starts staying with Shoji for a while until she starts finding her too needy. This forces Hachi to find an apartment of her own, and she starts working. Hachi wants to start being independent from this point. Hachi also ends up being roommates with Nana, the girl she meets on the train. This is when I really think Hachi is the happiest. She has a stable job as a secretary in an apartment she is paying for herself with a roommate she is starting to get really close with. This is what I would consider the good days for Hachi and Nana. They are both independent and are hopeful for the future. Also, the volumes I enjoyed reading the most, as the two girls really had no worries. Just dreams for the future. But soon enough, Shoji ends up cheating on Hachi with a girl named Sachiko. Of course, hurting Hachi to no end. As Shoji really hurt Hachi, it overwhelming amount that lingers with her throughout the whole series. Shoji showed Hachi that he never really loved her. He proved it a lot in different ways. First, Shoji does not want her to live with him. I don't blame him for this one, but I can see how it could affect Hachi. Then when Shoji told Hachi that any guy could hook up with a girl and have no feelings for her whatsoever. 
This is something they just don't say. Shoji says that any guy could feel this way, but it just says more about him than anyone else. Clearly affected Hachi in a huge way. Then finally, of course, Shoji cheated on her. The last draw for Hachi. Hachi never really was able to fully recover from his heartbreak. Nana saves her from taking her own life, as Hachi says herself, but Hachi never really fully heals from Shoji's breakup or from her previous heartbreak with the older guy. That leads us into where people start disliking Hachi, her relationships with Takumi and Nobu. Hachi was a huge fan of Trap Nest, the biggest band in Tokyo. Her favorite member was the leader, Takumi. She had a huge celebrity crush on Takumi. She never believed she would actually be in a relationship with him, let alone even meet him. Until it was revealed that her roommate Nana used to date a Trap Nest's bassist, Ren. Nana and Hachi go to a Trap Nest show together, and one thing leads to another, and Takumi and Ren end up coming over to Hachi and Nana's apartment, along with some of Nana's other friends. Takumi and Hachi get to know each other and eventually hook up a couple times. Their relationship was never really anything more than just one night stands though. Because their relationship was never really anything more than that, Hachi starts to move on from Takumi, realizing that Takumi isn't the person she imagined him to be. Even if she dreamed of being with him, she knew that the relationship wasn't healthy. Hachi ended up in another relationship soon after, this time one of Nana's bandmates and friends, Nobu. The sweetest of all guys Hachi was ever with. Nobu was honestly the only guy I think actually loved Nana, which made it hurt even more when Hachi didn't end up choosing Nobu. Hachi knew that Nobu was her true love, which is why I think she didn't end up choosing him. I know it sounds backwards, but hear me out. When Hachi finds out she's pregnant, Nobu's band Blast was barely starting to get their foot on the gas, while Takumi's band Trap Nest was the biggest thing in all of Tokyo. Takumi was well established already, compared to Nobu, who wasn't even sure if Blast was going to make it in the business. So Hachi was faced with these two options. Choose Takumi and get stability for her baby, but suffer with not being with her true lover, and later on be manipulated by Takumi, or choose Nobu, but have to work alongside Nobu to try to support the child. Nobu would also most likely have to leave his band Blast to raise the child. That's where I think Hachi made her decision. She didn't want to see Nobu leave Blast and make him raise a child that very well might not even be his. Blast meant a lot to Hachi, even if she wasn't even part of the band. Hachi loved Nana, and Nana's goal at the time was to make her band Blast bigger than Trap Nest. Seeing Nana's band lose a member in Nobu and have her dream of Blast taking over Trap Nest for the biggest band in Tokyo fail would hurt Hachi immensely. While at first look, Hachi's decision seems selfish to just choose the guy with a bigger band count, a second look at it makes a lot more sense even if it might hurt a lot more. It's a choice that will ultimately benefit everyone's goals and dreams. Seeing what happens to Hachi after she chooses Takumi is even more heartbreaking though. It's what happens in apartment 707, Hachi and Nana's apartment that really hurts the most. After Hachi chooses to be with Takumi, they ultimately decide to get married. They announce this to Nana at apartment 707. Hachi doesn't seem to be her usual self while they are talking, as Hachi isn't talking at all. Hachi here isn't talking to her because she knows she will hurt Nana no matter what she says. Hachi is doing what she thinks is best for not just herself and her baby but for everyone including Nana. She doesn't want to put the burden onto her bandmate Nobu of having a baby. Takumi is doing all the talking. He tells Nana that Hachi and him are going to get married and Hachi is moving out of apartment 707. This is extremely out of character for Hachi in the eyes of Nana. Up to this point, Hachi to Nana has always been an independent woman that strives to support herself. Hachi's actions at this moment don't make any sense to Nana. It feels as if Hachi is being controlled by Takumi. And worse, being taken away from Nana as Hachi is moving from apartment 707. What happens next though pushes Nana over the edge. Hachi and Takumi go to her room and it's hard to say what happens next, so I'll just show you. Takumi, I thought you had to get going to the studio. I've got plenty of time. But it might not be good for the baby. Don't worry, it'll be fine. Nana will hear us. Don't worry, just keep your voice down and she won't notice. But she's already so mad at me. Yeah? Well, don't you realize how mad I've been? I can't stand to think that another guy was inside you. You don't need to worry about anything. Just focus on making me happy. That bed we bought at Mizukoshi's store was old, and the springs always squeak. It's driving me crazy. You're way more important than any boyfriend, Nana. Liar. I think I'm... 
I'm head over heels in love with Nobu! Traitor. That means you'll need to look for a new roommate. Why the hell couldn't you tell me yourself? As Nana hears them, it infuriates her. How could Hachi choose Takumi over Nobu, who is someone that truly loves her? How could she not stand up for herself? Why is Hachi being so different? Why is everything being taken away from her? Nana smashes their two strawberry glasses, signifying their strong relationship being torn apart. This for me is easily the most heart-wrenching part in the whole series. It's really the turning point too. After this, it's hard to read the rest of the manga. Throughout the rest of the series, I was constantly wanting Nana and Hachi to be together once more. Nana breaking the strawberry glasses was very significant in Nana's life. Hachi was yet another person she had lost and another step closer in her being lonely once again. She wanted Hachi to choose Nobu just so she can keep seeing Hachi, even if it meant that Nobu would have to work to support their child. She didn't care if it was a selfish reason, she desperately wanted to be close to Hachi. But how did Nana get here? Why did she care for Hachi so much and why is she so afraid of being alone? Nana in the beginning of the book is portrayed as an extremely strong person. While Nana is a strong person, she isn't without her weaknesses and insecurities, as most of us are probably similar. She is definitely the most relatable character. Even if she appears to be a glamorous rock star that doesn't need anyone but herself. But deep down, Nana hopes to keep everyone around her extremely close. Nana has struggled with loneliness her entire life. She was abandoned by her mother as a small child, and was raised by her grandmother, who also wasn't very close to Nana, who later passed away. So she tries to keep all her friends in a small circle around her. Nana's band, Blast, started out in her hometown with her friends Yasu, Nobu, and her boyfriend Ren. Nana and Ren lived together in a cramped apartment. It was really the first time Nana had someone she could rely on and talk to about anything. She had a great band and a small but loyal fanbase. Until Ren got scouted for an upcoming band at a time, Trap Nest. Ren left for Tokyo to join Trap Nest. Nana could have very well left with Ren, but she chose to stay until she had enough of her own money to move to Tokyo. She also didn't want to leave Nobu and Yasu behind as well. Nana was confident that she could make it without Ren. She exclaimed to Nobu that she doesn't want to live with Ren and just rely on him in Tokyo. Even if she was a singer for Ren in Tokyo, Ren would just become bigger than her, overshadowing Nana and Nana would just end up as a housewife. Nana seemed strong and capable of being on her own, but not without struggles. She was very well capable of living on her own but with the pain of being lonely. She felt like throwing up every day she was alone. This was Nana's biggest weakness. She can't bear being lonely. Not only can she not bear being lonely, she wants people to herself. Later on, Nana does end up moving to Tokyo to try to pursue a career in the music business. When Nana moves to Tokyo and meets Hachi, they both get along very well, despite their personalities being drastically different from each other. Hachi cared and loved Nana a lot. She believed that she liked Nana more than Nana did her, but that wasn't quite true. Nana was falling in love with Hachi at every moment together passed. I didn't get to mention much of Nana's and Hachi's relationship when I was talking about Hachi, but I will here as it plays into more of Nana's character. Not that it doesn't play into Hachi's character too, but it plays into Nana a lot more. Nana and Hachi were practically inseparable while they were living together. Just the way they talk to each other, you can tell the close bond they have with each other. They support each other to no end, even if they don't agree with each other's actions. Their relationship is easily the strongest aspect of the entire series. You are constantly wanting them to be together. Throughout the series, I just wanted them to drop everything and just settle down in apartment 707 together for the rest of their lives. They share common interest in fashion, music, and partying, which they bond over. Just the way they express their love for each other, it all feels so magical but real. It's really hard to explain, but I hope I'm doing it justice. It's something you just have to read for yourself, as the dialogue is so real and meaningful, and if you read the book, you know what I mean. They are inseparable, until they seek to achieve their dreams. Hachi wants to be a caring housewife and mother and ends up with Takumi making her move from their apartment. Nana trying to get her band blast big has to now deal with paparazzi chasing the band around. When Hachi is being taken away from her, Nana breaks down. Going back to when Nana breaks the strawberry glasses is when Nana feels as Hachi is being taken away from her. Nana breaking the strawberry glasses was a sign of how she felt. Once more, she had someone taken from her. First, it was her grandma passing away. Then it was Ren leaving for Tokyo to join Trap Nest, and now it was her best friend, Hachi, by once more Trap Nest. Even though Hachi and her could still see each other, it wasn't the same. 
as Nana wanted Hachi all to herself. To Nana, Hachi was someone she could just lay it all out to. Before she met Hachi, Nana bottled up her emotions, while Hachi lets them all out even if it might hurt her in the end. Hachi does not care what others think of her and just lets everything out, while Nana really used to put on a facade and fake what she really wanted. Nana really wanted love and people close to her. Hachi gave that to her and more. She showed her that it's okay to let out your emotions and stand your ground. Nana tries desperately to get Hachi back even if it means making her friend Nobu get back with Hachi despite Hachi already being married to Takumi and Nobu being in another relationship. Whichever way to get Hachi back even if it's selfish, which is a character flaw Nana has, she is selfish. She wants everyone to herself. Since she had a rough past filled with abandonment and she can't help see another of her close friends abandon her. Especially when it's someone like Hachi. Someone who really understood Nana and someone who showed Nana that you can show your feelings and be who you want to be. I hope you guys enjoyed this as I very much enjoyed making it. Before I end it though, I want to finish this video with some final thoughts and lessons from Nana. First is that yeah, your dreams can come true, but there will always be a sacrifice. Haji had to sacrifice not being with her true love, Nobu, in exchange for stability for herself and her child. In the end, Nana had to sacrifice her relationships if she really wanted to make it in the music business. She had to learn to deal with her emotions while being alone. It's okay to let out your emotions. Nana seemed really strong before she met Hachi, but deep down, she was keeping a lot of her emotions locked up. When she met Hachi, Hachi really showed her that letting out your emotions is being strong. Facing them head on and learning to deal with them is being a strong person. It's okay to be alone. We all have to be content with being alone here or there. Not all of us have people to support us for all of our lives. That's why we need to learn to support ourselves while we are alone. It's great to have friends and family to support you, but it might not always be there. The journey is what really matters. While Nana and Hachi were living in apartment 707 together as the reader, I thought that this was really just the build up to something. They did as well. But as time passed, I realized that apartment 707 and the journey they went through together is what really mattered and taught them and myself many lessons. Sometimes I wish Nana and Hachi never met. Then they would never have had to leave each other. They meet each other and while trying to achieve their dreams, they are separated. It truly hurts, as they love each other a lot. I just wish they honestly just settled down and raised Hachi's child. That was honestly my dream ending, but you can't have everything you want. And that's the video. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end as the majority of people don't. As I said before, I really enjoyed making this video and I promise in one of my previous videos, I'm going to strive to make my videos as best as possible. But I will only be uploading once a week on Wednesday. Also, leave down in the comments what you think of Nana's characters and how you would analyze them. What I love about looking at stories and characters is that there's no right way to theorize or analyze about them. We all have our own different ways of looking at them and our own opinions. So leave them down in the comments. So I'll leave it at that. Now I'll be on my way to apartment 707.